Hi. <laughs> well, have you ever tried to figure out how to write the circle of fifths? And big question, can you write the circle of fifths in less than one minute? Well, we're about to find out. I'm Glory St. Germain from Ultimate Music Theory, and in the Complete Rudiments Workbook, you learn about the open circle of fifths, as we like to call it, and we also are going to learn today not only open circle of fifths, but how do we find those inharmonic keys that are often confusing when you're first learning the circle of fifths. And we're also going to learn why is it called the circle of fifths. You might wonder, we know it is, but what is the actual reason behind that? So at Ultimate Music Theory, we're all about um, simplifying concepts and making them easy to understand and therefore easy to implement when you're not only learning about music theory, but obviously implementing them into your practical lessons. So now I'm about to reveal the three secret keys to unlocking the circle of fifths. So if you have your complete rudiments workbook handy, you might want to follow inside the workbook. So let's get started. So what is the circle of fifths? Now, before we get started in learning about the circle of fifths, we have a couple of other things that we want to talk about first. And that is that the circle of fifths is, it's like a map of the major and minor keys. And the major keys are written on the outside of the circle. And the circle of fifths is actually based on learning pentascales. So a pentascale is, big reveal, based on the pattern of whole tone or whole step and half steps or semitone. So it's tone, tone, semitone, tone. And here we see we've got C up to G, which will be the next key on the circle of fifths. We'll learn about that in a minute. So then this is one, two, three, four, five. And now G becomes one, and we count again, one, two, three, four, five. So now that we see our major keys, we want to use um, a common word. I, this is a mnemonic device. Now, some people say, well, you should just remember the order of sharps, so or you should just remember the order of flats. And I get that, and that's great. However, it's really handy when we're first learning something to use mnemonic devices in order to help us remember easier. So a mnemonic device is a memory jogger. And we actually implement nine different mnemonic devices throughout the Ultimate Music Theory program to help you remember easier. In previous videos, we've talked about image mnemonics and model mnemonics and music mnemonics. So today we're going to use the sentence. So this is the sentence, and you're going to see how cool this one is. And you might come up with your own, but the reason I love using this sentence in order to remember the flats and the sharps around the circle of fifths is that the sentence can be used frontwards and backwards. So here it is. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Go ahead and say it with me. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. That's the order of sharps as you see them right here. Now, when you say the sentence backwards, battle ends and down goes Charles' father, it's the order of flats. So that makes it easy to remember the order of flats, battle ends and down goes Charles' father, which is on the left side of the circle, and Father Charles goes down and ends battle, which is on the right side of the circle. Okay, so now we get that. So the major pentascale, so penta means five. So there are five notes in a major pentascale, and the major pentascale pattern is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. That leads us from one major key to the next major key. So here is key number one, the big reveal. Are you ready? So key number one is learning the major keys around the circle of fifths. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips before we uh, have the challenge of writing out the circle of fifths in one minute, less than one minute. <laughs> That's a big one to try to accomplish. But first we're gonna learn how to do it. So we know that we have C and we count up one, two, three, four, five, and then the five becomes one, which is the G, and then we count up again, one, two, three, four, five, and it becomes D and so on, based on the major pentascale pattern. When you're writing the circle of fifths, 
And now that you understand how the circle of fifths is formed, we simply want to write the circle of fifths out so that we can use that um, in preparing to complete um, a music theory exam or if we just want to have uh, a quick memory of, you know, what's in the key of D major and so on. So here's how we go. Starting on the outside of the circle, and we always start at the number one on the flat side, and we always work clockwise around the circle. And it's important to be consistent. So let's take the major keys. Father, Charles, goes, down, and ends, battle. Well, now what? <laughs> we used our sentence. Well, here's the cool thing. We simply use the same sentence again, continuing around the outside of the circle. So now we're going to go father, sharp, Charles, sharp. Now when we cross the line, we're going to repeat C, but remember that we're changing to the flat keys when we cross the line. So Charles, flat, goes, flat, down, flat, and flat, ends, flat, battle, flat. So now you can see battle ends and down goes Charles, father, battle ends. We can say the same sentence frontwards or backwards, but that makes it super easy. So number one, learn the major pentascale pattern. Once we understand uh, that it's F, G, A, B, C, C, D, E, F, G, G, A, B, C, D, D, E, F, G, A, and so on, that's what creates the major keys on the outside of the circle of this. So you good with that? Okay, so now those are the major keys, but what about the minor keys? When we're going around the outside of the minor keys, um, are on the inside of the circle, because a major key and its relative minor keys are simply three semitones apart. So now we need to know the minor pentascale pattern. So the minor pentascale pattern also is based on a series of either tones or semitones. And the minor pentascale pattern is whole tone, semitone, whole tone, whole tone. So now as we go up the minor pentascale pattern, it's pretty cool because when you go from the front door, as I would say, into the back door, it's only three half steps to go from major key to minor key. Does that make sense? Now, if you're teaching the circle of fifths to your students, just go ahead and put in the chat box, circle of fifths. Sorry, I seem to be <laughs> eating my own hair here. So just put in the chat box, circle of fifths or what's open circle of fifths. So the open circle of fifths is when we show all seven major keys with sharps and all seven major keys with flats. And the reason I like to open the circle of fifths, and we will get into that in harmonic uh, in a minute, but because when we're thinking in the key of C sharp major, we're thinking about seven sharps, period. When we're thinking in the key of G flat major, we're thinking about six flats. So we don't want to talk about the inharmonic keys just yet. We just want to learn about the circle of fifths, and I call this the open circle of fifths, so we can see everything easily. Okay, so now we know the minor pentascale pattern. Circle of fifths, yay, Camara's joining us today. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby, we love this stuff. Uh, so now we know the minor pentascale, and now we're going to take and reveal key number two. You ready for this one? Okay. Number key, uh, number two is the minor keys. Now, the minor keys go inside the circle of fifths. And just another little tip, we're always going to use the same sentence, Father Charles, we're always going to use the same sentence. But when we start this one, we're just, and again, I'm giving you little tips on how you can help your students to remember the circle of fifths. We're going to start with the first letter of the alphabet, which is A. <laughs> First letter of the alphabet is A, so I'm gonna draw a line in here. So that's the first letter of the alphabet, A, and I always start on the flat side and we always move clockwise. So when we started with the major keys, we started with the sentence, Father Charles, and so on. And we're gonna do it again. But this time for the minor keys, we're gonna use lowercase letters, all right? So now we're gonna go inside the circle and we're using the same sentence. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Okay, so we've used our sentence, so now what do we do? Yay, we can just use the same sentence again. That makes it so easy, right? So now we know that in the key of A major, we have three sharps, and they are 
Father Charles goes F, C, G. So this, in fact, is going to be an F sharp minor. So we're going to add the F sharp. So Father sharp, Charles sharp, goes sharp, down sharp, and sharp. Remember when you cross the line, you're going from sharp keys to flat keys. And flat ends flat battle flat. So how easy is that, right? Now that makes sense. We've got our major pentascale pattern that we know and understand. And we write the major keys on the outside of the circle, always going clockwise and always using our mnemonic device, memory jogger sentence, right? because we can use it frontwards and backwards. Then we look at the minor pentascale pattern, and we're going to write the inside of the circle, and we're going to use lowercase letters. So now here's the really cool part. Let's look even deeper into our circle of this. You ready for this one? When you look at, uh, maybe I'll use the black marker for this one. I like all my colored markers. <laughs> here's the cool thing. When you look at the letter C, and A minor, we can see this one. It always, everything in the circle of this, you know, music is so much like math, right? If you love music and math, hit me up in the little chat box. Music and math, I can see some of you are getting in there, that's awesome. So now, if we look at C flat major, A flat minor, and C sharp major, and A sharp minor, we can see that seven plus zero equals seven right? 7 plus 0 equals 7. Do you see we have G and E? And then again, we have G flat and E flat. 1 plus 6 is 7. We have D major, B minor. We have D flat major, B flat minor. So 2 plus 5 is 7. Then if we go for A major and F sharp minor, or A flat major and F minor, 3 plus 4 is 7. Wow, so when you go around the circle of fifths, we have the same letter names, obviously flats or sharps, whatever, but it always adds up to seven. So that's another way to check your work. As you're writing the circle of fifths, if these don't match, then you've made a mistake. So to go around the outside of the circle of fifths is five. To go around the inside of the circle of fifths is five. It's always a perfect fifth. Um, or you can use the pentascale pattern. When you go from the front door, as I call it, into the out the back door, from a major key to a minor key, it's always three half steps or three semitones. Does that make sense? Give me a little yes in the chat box. <laughs> so now, sometimes, and I did want to share this with you. When I first started learning music theory, I was given the circle of fifths and told to memorize it. That was my lesson. Here it is, memorize it. And the first time that I saw the circle of fifths, it was written out with inharmonic keys. And I thought, this is confusing because I didn't really understand how simple the circle of fifths is. So here I'm sharing with you the image of the inharmonic keys as you would see it in, hopefully you can see that I'm trying to line it up. So this is in the complete rudiments workbook. And as you can see, you identify the inharmonic keys. And that's important, and we're going to learn about that. But what we do want to know is how do we find all of the major keys and all of the minor keys first before we get to the next step of inharmonic keys? Otherwise, it just gets complicated. So here's the cool thing about it. When you are looking at, oh, number three, big reveal in harmonic keys. So what, first of all, what does that word mean? So the word in harmonic means the same pitch, different name. Same pitch, different name. So if we look at the in harmonic keys, what exactly is that? So on the circle of fifths, we can see that D flat and C sharp are the same. So that would be called in harmonic. So C sharp, which is here, I'll just circle it here, C sharp and D flat little polka dot. <laughs> so C sharp and D flat are in fact the same pitch. They're simply written differently. So if we think of um, our C sharp, which is here, and our D flat, which is here, these two are called inharmonic, meaning that they sound the same when we play them, but they're written differently. So that's inharmonic. When we look at um, F sharp and G flat, these two keys, F sharp and G flat 
Are you getting confused with all my colors? <laughs> I like coloring, it's fun. So now we see that G flat and F sharp are in harmonic keys, right? So that would be the major one. And of course, if you go on and do the next one, then you would have C flat and B. And so those are the three in harmonic keys, and the same would be applicable for the relative minor keys inside the circle of fifths. So first we find the major keys, second we identify the minor keys, and third we identify the in harmonic keys. So if you are in love with the circle of fifths, it's now easy for you to write it out quickly, to understand how it all works, and that just makes things easy. So if you're on the call with me here today or you're watching the replay, I have a challenge for you. And I'm challenging myself on this one. So the challenge is this. We're going to write the circle of fifths in less than one minute. I know, that's crazy, right? So let me bring over my little circle of fifths for you here. All right, I can do this. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I challenge myself and then I wonder why. Why, why, why am I doing all of this? I'm going to bring it in a bit there so you can hopefully see it and you're not getting too much of a glare off of my circle. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> so we have our circle, right? You can see it here. We have our circle and we have our order of flats, battle ends, and down goes Charles' father. So grab a piece of paper because we're going to do this in less than one minute. Are you ready? Okay, grab a piece of paper. This is a one minute thing. If you're up for the challenge, just, just put a little note in the chat box, challenge, all right? Challenge, put it in. <laughs> it's fun to do a challenge. And I often do the challenge with my students Then we actually have an easy button and whoever gets to finish the circle of fifths first gets to hit the easy button. So we do the order of flats on the top left, battle ends and down goes Charles' father. We do the order of sharps on the top right. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Okay, so far so good. You draw a circle, get your piece of paper ready because this is a one minute little challenge. And zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you're going to put the, the line straight down and then seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So we want to get that down first. All right, so go ahead and write that down. Now, the reason that there is a line here is that is um, a visual representation of the change going from the, the sharp keys to the flat keys. So it's important to write that down. Now, we do know about the inharmonic. Wow, that's very colorful. <laughs> we do know about the inharmonic keys. And inharmonic means same pitch different letter name. So when you played the scale, if I was gonna play the scale of B major for you, and then if I played the scale of C flat major, they would sound identical, but they would be written differently. Okay, are you ready for the challenge? Christopher says yes, okay, so let's go. Uh, if you have a little timer, you can time me. Hang on for the ride because I will be talking fast, and I'm going to do it exactly the same as I did it here. So are you ready? Set your timer. Okay, I'll give you the countdown. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, go. Order of sharps. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Father sharp, Charles sharp. Charles flat, goes flat, down flat, and flat, ends flat, battle flat. First letter of the alphabet, A. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Father sharp, Charles sharp, goes sharp, down sharp, and sharp, and flat, ends flat, battle flat, stop. Did you do it? <laughs> if you did it with me, that's pretty fast talking, right? But the fun of doing this is that, first of all, it goes into our memory. You know, when you are learning something and when you want to create a habit, it takes between 21 days and 67 days to reprogram the subconscious mind in order to make things a habit. When I look back in my journey of studies, and for some of you that have joined me in the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course, you know how I've talked about mindset 
and working on professional development and continuing to work on professional development. And I now am in the happy habit of always studying every day from six in the morning till 8 a.m. That's my study time. That's my personal professional development time. And when we develop that habit and share that habit with our students, they too will become very, very successful, whether it's simply starting with learning the circle of fifths and writing it out every day before you do your theory so that it's sort of so easy you could do it in your sleep or you could do it in less than one minute. So I want to challenge you now. I have another challenge, ah, but wait, there's more. I want to challenge you to whether you are a musician or whether you are a professional educator or uh, whether you're a music teacher. I want to challenge you to do the complete rudiments workbook yourself as a student. And if you're looking for a little extra help, you can also uh, do the complete rudiments theory course. It's an online course where I'm your teacher and I walk you through every single page. We do the book together and then you check your answer pages and there's a couple of exams that you can complete and submit to our um, UMTC examiner, Sheila McKibben-Uren. We are here to support your learning. And if there's anything else that you think, you know, hey, Glory, could you talk about this topic? Go ahead and just um, put it into the chat box. And when I'm doing my, uh, my Facebook Lives, I'll make sure to address those theory concepts in one of our upcoming events. So there's the challenge. Do your circle of fifths in one minute. I gave you those three keys today. First, do the major keys on the outside of the circle, uppercase letters. Key number two, uh, do the minor keys on the inside of the circle. Remember the pentascale uh, pattern. And number three, uh, learn the inharmonic equivalent keys so that you understand that it's the same pitch, but it's different letter names. So here's to your successful journey. Make sure to go through the Complete Rudiments Workbook. I know you can do it. And uh, happy learning and happy teaching. So. Have a great day. Thanks.